Hello, everyone. Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling College Fair. We are really excited to have you participating in this event tonight. We've got some fantastic schools with us here today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, um, but they will be around for the entire session to answer your questions. Now, my name is Andy, and I'm going to be your facilitator today. And before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions that you have to, your, to our presenters at any time. Also, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded, and that recording will be available at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. And now I'd like to turn things over to our first presenter, the University of Oregon. Thanks so much. Well, hello everyone. My name is Emily Carmichael. I'm with the University of Oregon and I am regionally based in New Jersey. So along the way, as you have any questions or if there's anything that I can do to help, please reach out and let me know what I can do. You are welcome to call, text, email, set up another Zoom, set up a Zoom meeting with me, whatever it is that you find to be helpful as you're going through the process. So let me know what I can do to help. I want to start by just talking generally about our student population. We do have just under 19,000 undergraduate students. And if you were to add in our graduate and professional students, it brings us up to a number of about 23,000. So we affectionately refer to it as a big, small school. You'll get all of the opportunities of a large research institution while still maintaining a really great small community on campus. And you can walk from one end to the other within 15 minutes. We have a really diverse population on our campus and that is definitely something that's a big source of pride for us. We're more diverse than the state of Oregon. And um, you can see here that we have all 50 states represented, 90 different countries. And so um, it really is a very inviting and welcoming community where we are. We have 168 different academic programs to choose from, majors and minors. You can see the full list here. Our most popular way to start out is as undecided. About 30% of our students will start out that way. And you don't have to decide until the end of your sophomore year. You have academic advisors to utilize as you're making your decision, but know that we have strengths across the board um, and lots of options to choose from. We are a tier one research institution and almost three quarters of our students are getting involved in research while they're on campus. One of the things that I think is one of U of O's greatest strength is that we actually have a really small graduate population, as I mentioned. So with that, it's primarily our undergraduates that are getting these research opportunities. And yes, you'll find them in STEM, but you'll also find them across the board in any area of academic study. One of my personal favorite fun facts about U of O is that our College of Education actually ha has houses our highest research budget. So it's really being done across the board. But we're a member of the AAU or the Association of American Universities and only about 60 schools are selected for this honor. We're selected for it because of our research opportunities. It's great company that we keep on this list and definitely a big source of pride for us. So I just always recommend if you are ever seeing a professor who's getting involved in research, just speak up and let them know because they're always going to have students involved in their research opportunities. So make sure to take advantage of those. So as you can see, we've had fantastic research opportunities existing on our campus for a very long time now, but this is something that's only going to continue to expand because in 2020, we opened up the Phil and Penny Knight Campus for Accelerating Scientific Impact. It is overall going to be a three building project that will open up more undergraduate and graduate research opportunities on campus. And it's just an amazing time to be part of our community. One of the projects that's going along with this new gift is our newest major. So currently we have bioengineering as a minor, which is one of our newest programs on campus. And we are so excited to finally have engineering on our campus at the University of Oregon. This is going to further expand to a major in the next year or so. So we're just really excited for all that's happening on our campus. 
We do also have over 300 different clubs and organizations for our students to be able to get involved in, and they are across the board in any area of academic study, social opportunities, opportunities to get involved in volunteer work. You can pull up a full listing on our website, and if for some reason you can't find what you're looking for, there's always opportunities to start clubs up as well. But they are not major specific, so you can get involved in something outside of your program, um, and you have a ton of options to choose from. We are also Division I Pac-12 for Athletics, it's a really fun for fun school to go out and watch some sports. Um, we do have a first year live on requirement on campus. So all of our freshmen will live on campus and typically our students will move off campus after that. That tends to be our trend, but if you decide you wanna stay on campus, you do get first choice. So that is an option for you as well. But we have 10 different residence halls to choose from, lots of great options. And that also includes our academic residential communities or as we call them ARCs. So you can choose to live with students in your academic program if you'd like, or students that are getting involved in something that you're interested in. It's not required to live in an ARC, but it's a great way to find your niche right away on campus. We do have wonderful programs in STEM that are ARCs for you to choose from, things like environmental leaders. We have um, women in science and math and many other different options that you can choose from. With those ARCs, there is a faculty mentor associated with it, so you really get that connection developed right away on campus. Now here you can see just one really small example of many opportunities that our students are getting on campus. A lot of our students who are interested in pursuing a career in something like medicine um, will choose to study our human physiology major. And that program, we actually have a cadaver lab on campus and it's built into the undergraduate curriculum in the human phys program. So not only is it really unique to get that opportunity as an undergraduate, but to have it already built into the curriculum is really fantastic. Students who are interested in something like physical therapy, you also get the opportunity to work with our athletes, which is a really unique opportunity to get. So I just recommend pursue these options early on. Um, they're available to you. And so you definitely really want to make use of them. And here is all of my contact information. Again, I want to thank you so much for your time. Please reach out if there's anything else I can do. Have a great day and go Ducks. All right. Thank you so much to the University of Oregon. And next up, we have Utica College. Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Noga. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions uh, here at Utica University. Uh, we actually, that is a new change for us. Uh, we actually did uh, just get that designation. We were able to get approval through New York State Board of Regents to get that official Utica University designation, um, which I think is really exciting news for, for everybody. Um, so welcome to Utica. So I want to tell you guys a bit more about Utica and all that we have to offer uh, for students that are specifically uh, interested in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, so one of the things that I think is important to note is our campus size. Uh, so we are a small to mid-sized private university uh, with about 5,000 undergraduate and graduate students from all over the world. Uh, we do offer 16 of the top 20 majors. Uh, those will be the top 20 most popular majors across the United States. Uh, and we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, I think what's important to keep in mind with that uh, really is just the size of your classes, which on average probably be about 20 to 25 students. So you get a lot of, um, you know, definitely specialized attention. You're a name, uh, you're not a member, you get to know your professors. All of your classes are taught by full-time faculty uh, at the highest level in their field. Um, and I think it's a really cool opportunity, especially for students that are interested in STEM fields, uh, to be able to get that uh, experience and work closely with their professors. So one of the things that we always talk about with uh, Utica University is the value of our degree. So it, go, it goes beyond just the classroom and the college experience. You know, you're here to prepare yourself for a career and we recognize that and we wanna make sure that you are fully prepared for that professional world. Uh, so, you know, we are always talking about the things that we're doing uh, for the future, um, building our campus, building our strategy in terms of campus relations outside us with the community, uh, relationships with employers. And a lot of that translates to great opportunities for internships. Um, and we have a lot going on on campus in terms of recruiting over 200 employers that come to campus every year to recruit our students. Um, and then 
the mentoring aspect really goes back to what I was mentioning uh, through our relationships that students are able to build with our faculty. It's really an open door policy for one of our faculty and you get to know them uh, on a you know, first name basis and it becomes very comfortable. Uh, it's more of a family atmosphere uh, when you're here at Utica. Um, and then another great opportunity too is the opportunity for research. Uh, undergraduates have the opportunity to do research and you also have the ability to apply to get funding through the university up to $500 a year for student-led research. And a lot of the times our students, even at the undergraduate level, are going on to actually publish in peer-reviewed journals and present that research at regional and national conferences. So for really exciting news for you students that are interested in uh, science, uh, we built a brand new $16 million science center that just opened its doors this fall uh, for our students. So state-of-the-art technology and lab spaces. Um, it's a really just a gorgeous facility. Um, it ties into the campus very well and is directly attached to our previous science building, which is Golden Science Center. So it's everything that you really need, the entire science wing of campus dedicated uh, to your students um, that are interested in many different programs. So I wanted to lay out some of the programs here that you might be interested in for STEM, um, for science majors, animal behavior, biochemistry, biology, uh, geoscience, health sciences, physics. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out too is psychology uh, that does fall under the designation for the sciences. And we offer a few different pathways. The one concentrated area we offer is psychology child life, which is actually a unique program. Uh, we're only one of a few, few colleges in the Northeast that offer that program. Um, for math related programs, business data analytics, um, and we also have other technology related programs like computer science and cybersecurity um, and finance and mathematics. And then some of the ones that we are really well known for here at Utica uh, are health science majors and medical field programs. So like nursing, occupational therapy, physical therapy, those are all direct entry programs um, that you have the opportunity to be a part of to actually pursue graduate study. Uh, with both those OT and PT programs. And then we also have pre-professional programs. So if you're looking to go on to medical school, dental school, optometry, podiatry, or if you're looking to become a vet, uh, we have those undergraduate programs and students really excel here at Utica for them. Uh, and then if you want to be a teacher, if you want to be an educator, we actually have programs that are built for STEM educators and teachers. Um, it's, a, it's a great program to be able to address the national shortage of qualified STEM teachers and scholarships are actually going to be awarded uh, up to $17,500 for both junior and senior years. Um, so that teacher certification is going to be offered for like math, biology, chemistry, physics, geoscience. So if you're looking to teach STEM fields um, at the high school level or middle school level, these are great opportunities for you. So something to think about. And we also have introduced our past program Pathways to Achieving STEM Success. Uh, that past program is committed to recruiting stale, uh, talented scholars um, that have high uh, financial need. Uh, so for students that are interested in any of these majors here, so animal behavior, biochemistry, biology, chemistry, geoscience, or physics, um, these uh, opportunities are available to provide, uh, provide additional funding. And this is on top of any financial aid that you would normally get uh, when you are considered for the review process for admissions. Um, if you are interested, our application requirements are really straightforward. You can go out to our website. These are some of our dates where we are rolling admissions. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact our office. Thank you, everybody. I'll let the uh, next presenter take over here. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Brandon. My name is Corinne Shell, and I'm waiting for my picture to come up. Oh, here we go. So, and I'm going to grab my share screen. Huh. Okay, I have to pull that back up. Uh, I apologize for that. Just let me find it. Okay, and 
Andy, you helped me before. Um, um, it looks good. We're, we're on the right uh, okay, spot, so you, I think. You can see the, the, the mayor's slide. And I've just wasted a full minute, so I apologize. But again, my Don't name worry, is I haven't started the clock yet. Okay, thanks. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Corinne Schell, and I'm Director of West Coast Admission at Marist College, uh, which is located in Poughkeepsie, New York, about an hour and a half north of New York City. We are a private four-year liberal arts school, uh, about an hour and a half north of New York City, but one mile from the train station, which enables our students to get down to Manhattan uh, to take advantage of internship programs. I find students love our campus because we are a traditional college campus, as you can see here. We are located right on the Hudson River, um, but very easily accessible to the city. So students can do their internships and whatnot down in Manhattan, but hop on a train and get back to the campus and enjoy everything from football games to different clubs and organizations. So then this is just uh, to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of, of our campus. That is the student center, students going from one class to the other. Um, we do have uh, over 70 different majors uh, that students can choose from. Some of our very popular majors do tend to be uh, computer sciences, 90% of those students have jobs before they can enter their senior year. Uh, we offer the data analytics. We have the cybersecurity, which is a really popular major now. Information systems, information technology, computer science. Uh, and these students really do have those opportunities to do some pretty amazing internship programs and get paid for it. Our sciences are also very popular at Marist. We have everything from athletic training. So if students are interested in going into the field of uh, physical therapy, we do recommend and suggest students to go this route. Uh, we are a division one school for sports. So we have 23 varsity, 19 club sports, and a large assortment of intramural programs. So our students in athletic training are working with our division one athletes, as well as the different uh, club sports and the intramurals, but they also work at the local high schools uh, in their athletic departments. We also have biology, we have medical technology, we have the biochemistry, the uh, biomedical sciences. We do have the pre-vet, pre-health, pre-dental program. Uh, we have a uh, the pre-health programs. We actually have a cadaver lab on campus, which for a school our size, we're not a research institute, to have those type of facilities is literally unheard of. Uh, but we do have a master's level physician's assistant program. So our students at the undergraduate level that may be interested in pursuing that uh, will take advantage of all of the things the college offers to hopefully be admitted to the program at that master's level. Uh, we have several partnerships with uh, hospitals within New York City, as well as in the local area, everything from Columbia Presbyterian uh, Sloan Memorial Kettering Research Institute down in Manhattan. Uh, there's a, a hospital right across the street from campus, and then a little further down the road is Vassar Hospital. So our students that are interested in those uh, pre-health programs uh, have the opportunity for different types of internships. Just to give you a little bit of background, uh, we're a little over 5,600 undergraduate students. We do offer over 40 different majors, not over 70, I apologize. Uh, and then we do have 15 graduate programs, several of which are uh, combined with the undergraduates so students can get their bachelor's and their master's within five years. And computer science is also one of them, information systems, which is the business end of the industry. Our students come from 44 different states, 58 different countries. And then here are the success rate. 97% of our students within six months of graduation are employed or in grad school, which is amazing. Uh, and I do attribute that to not only the strong academics, but the fact that the students have those opportunities to do internships uh, within their major. Every one of our majors has an internship coordinator that works with the students to help place them in internships that they really would like to uh, pursue. And then classroom experience, we're more visual, hands-on than a faculty member standing up in front of you, uh, kind of lecturing at you. So it's more constructive conversation. And then again, a lot of hands-on opportunities for our students. Uh, our, uh, all of our faculty, uh, a majority of them have their uh, doctorate. We do not have uh, teaching assistants. None of our classes are in lecture halls. All of our classes are taught by faculty. 
uh, professions in their particular industry. And then we do have the core curriculum. So our students are getting that uh, liberal arts education, which makes them just a very well-rounded individual, uh, teaches them how to write, you know, to think critically. Uh, so a lot of different great opportunities for our students. And then here's the anatomy lab that we do offer on campus. Uh, this is our sports center uh, and majority of our students, a lot of them in sports communication will do internships uh, at ESPN. Uh, we do have a partnership with them, but they'll also do internships at anything from Yankee Stadium to any one of the major uh, teams within the New York State area. Uh, we do have the Marist poll, Marist Institute for Public Opinion. Students will poll at the state, the national, the local level. Uh, we are nationally and even internationally known for our poll. And then we do have an investment center. Uh, our students in finance have the opportunity to uh, work in our investment center, which is a great opportunity. I will put my contact information into the chat box. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to reach out. And thank you. All right, thank you so much to Marist College. And next up, we've got the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Thank you, Andy. Hello, all. My name is Brandon with PIA, the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Simply stated, what we do is give our students the hands-on education and training needed to propel them into careers in the industries of aviation, aerospace, robotics, as well as a wide variety of other technological paths that might spark their interest throughout our program. So PIA has been in existence since 1929. We are a nonprofit educational institution with a long running history of empowering our students into the industries I mentioned. But right off the bat, I do wanna share while we are the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics, in the 2000s, we began to expand out to branch campuses. So depending which one might fit and suit your future plans, we have a branch campus in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, right off the ocean, Youngstown, Ohio, and Hagerstown, Maryland. I'll share a little bit of the difference between those and our main campus with you throughout the day today. We are also Forbes number one two-year trade school, not just for aviation and aerospace, but taking into many factors, how much our program costs versus how much our grads make, overall student experience, so if you have an interest in this, it could be a great option for you to explore. We are hands-on and we dive into all aspects of working on aircraft, but you need no mechanical background or experience to enter our program. Great if you have an interest or passion in that, but that's what we're here for. Really someone who just has an interest, even if you've never picked up a screwdriver at any mechanical background, we can fill all that in for you, as you'll see with uh, some of our students working right there. So the world of aviation is extremely vast, whether it be commercial aviation, cargo aviation, aerospace, maintenance repair overhaul centers, all potential paths for our students to explore while in our program and professionally. So whether it be planes, jets, drones, helicopters, blimps, anything under that aeronautical umbrella that is available to them as an option, whether you're with me live or watching this recorded, you can scan that QR link or just type pia.edu forward slash learn more into your web browser to request more information. I'd love to have someone follow up with you after this, answer a question, invite you to our open house, invite you for a personal tour, whatever that might look like for you. I mentioned planes, rockets, jets, drones, blimps, but it doesn't stop there. If it moves mechanically, essentially, our graduates are qualified to work on it. Disney will hire our grads to work on roller coasters, submarines, uh, different hospital diagnostic equipment. And what I really love about this is it provides a plethora of paths and options for our students to explore in the industry. PIA grads have gone on to work at NASA, Boeing, SpaceX, Aerojet Rocketdyne, Blue Origin, Piedmont, American Airlines, Constant Aviation, so many different paths. And I'd love for you to check out a full list of where our grads are working right there. It might serve as inspiration and motivation for what you wanna do with your future. I always like to share our top five employers from our Pittsburgh main campus, Air Methods, Medical Transport, literally providing the transportation that of patients and supplies that saves lives, commercial aviation brightening lives, aerospace helping humanity forge forward, cargo aviation literally helping our society function. And what I love about this is if you're interested in it, it gives you not only a career that you can 
earn enough to support you and your family and have a good life, but really gives you an opportunity to leave your mark on this world in some really wonderful ways. Take you a little peek inside our campus because at PIA, we are all about having our students experience their education and live out the lessons they learn. Every one of my campuses has its own private hangar with our own aircraft. There's our Pittsburgh campus. You're seeing our Learjet, North American Sabre Liner. We have helicopters. Just had a Rolls Royce jet engine donated to our Ohio Youngstown campus. So that's what I mean. About 60 to 70% of the time, a student is in our hangar working on aircraft properly preparing them for the industry, but also really creating an aspect of enjoyment in their education, that they're getting to work on aircraft before they're even into the industry. Always love that. Maybe the weirdest piece of advice I'll share, but a beneficial one, use social media to your advantage. Our Instagram is almost like a visual course catalog. So if you're excited about what I'm sharing, go on, check out some of the projects our students are working on in the program. The aircraft, some of our alumni uh, spotlights, testimonials, see where they're working at, really give you a deeper inside peek into what we're about uh, at PIA, even beyond what I'll share with you today. There you can find us. As I mentioned, we do have those four campuses. And the big reason for that was the demand on us from students as well as the industry. At PIA, we're extremely specialized. We have two programs, that's aviation maintenance technology and aviation electronics technology. Aviation maintenance technology culminates in students being certified by the Federal Aviation Administration. And you can see the difference right there, 16 month uh, certification at our branch campuses, 21 month associate in specialized technology degree program at our Pittsburgh main campus. For avionics, if aviation maintenance is the brawn of the aircraft, wings, landing gear, propulsion systems, avionics is the brains, flight, radar, navigation, all the aspects that allows the plane and pilot to communicate with itself, rocket, helicopter, whatever we might be talking about. That culminates in students being licensed by the Federal Communication Commission and only is offered as an associate in specialized technology degree at our Pittsburgh main campus. For the right person, we do have a dual ticket option, which you can complete both programs in 33 months. Simply stated, we train aviation maintenance technicians and their role and job is to ensure aircraft operate optimally. Learn the past of aviation so you can understand the present, so you can build, dream on, and work on the future of these amazing industries that continue to bud, blossom, and bloom. So many different opportunities and prestige in this industry. Right now, you can see 63% of the industry is over 50 years old, not only allowing you to get into the industry, but quickly advance some of Boeing's job projections over roughly the next 20 years. What I want to share, May 24th is AMT Day to honor all they do to help this world. So a little bit of prestige and honor in there for this career. Our students, each one of our campuses, just recently and every year gets to compete in the aerospace maintenance competition, most recently in Dallas, Texas. Check it out on YouTube if you want. It's the Olympics of aerospace maintenance, engineering, building, designing, and we send teams to compete. A great way for our students to show off their skills, just like athletes on a sports field, theater kids on the stage. This is our tech and STEM students chance to show off their skills. Love to have one of our representatives work with you on such thing as the micro scholarship. You had several students win that recently for trade education, as well as an amazing opportunity, Piedmont, which is a subsidiary of American Airlines for our Hagerstown and Myrtle Beach campus, has a program right now where a student can apply and they'll pay their entire tuition at PIA if they agree to work for Piedmont for two years out of school. Amazing uh, position to get out of school, an amazing opportunity that they can provide. If you're looking for those next steps, you can scan that QR code or go to pia.edu forward slash learn more. I would love to have someone follow up with you on what we do and what we're all about. You're definitely taking the steps, right steps today being here. So I wish you the best and brightest future in whatever path you end up picking. All right. Thank you so much to PIA. And next up, we've got the University of Cincinnati. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. All right. So my name is Erin Stahl Kiefer. Um, I am the regional enrollment coordinator for the greater New York area for the University of Cincinnati. I'm regionally based in uh, the Hudson Valley, New York area, actually, but I am a born and raised Jersey girl. So I have a strong um, attachment to New Jersey myself. Um, so with our University of Cincinnati programs, we are a large public tier one research institution. Our total enrollment is um, just about 47,000 students. That includes undergrad, grad, and our three campuses. Um, our Uptown campus, which is our main campus that students from out of state are typically applying to, we have about a little over 27,000 undergraduate students on our main campus. 
Um, student to faculty ratio 19 to one. So even though we're a large institution, you're still getting some smaller school feel in the classroom. Um, about 70% of our classes have 40 students or fewer, uh, but we do have over 350 academic programs to choose from, many of which are STEM related. Um, I believe almost all, if not all of our academic colleges at University of Cincinnati have at least one STEM specific major, if not more. Um, obviously our College of Engineering, Medicine, Allied Health Sciences, um, those are gonna have a lot more than just one <laughs> STEM major, but we have many different options to choose from, whether it's STEM or not STEM. Them, um, focused. Um, in terms of our uh, location, being in the city of Cincinnati, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, the city of Cincinnati is a great affordable place to live. Um, like I said, I grew up in New Jersey and I live in New York, so I know what the cost of living is like in the Northeast, um, and it is very, very different down in Cincinnati. Um, so our students are able to have a really great affordable cost of living as a student at UC, um, being able to go to different restaurants, uh, sporting events, festivals, really enjoying the city from a social aspect, but also utilizing it really fully for their um, enhancing their, their internship and co-op opportunities while they're a student at UC. Um, we have 400 Fortune 500 companies located in the city of Cincinnati. So again, great opportunity um, to be able to get involved in internships and co-op and, and really get that experience, that hands-on learning while at the University of Cincinnati. So STEM at UC, um, uh, there's a lot that we could <laughs> that I could cover, but obviously with the limited time frame, um, I've narrowed it down. So I've talked a little bit about co-op and internships. This is a really big part of the curriculum at Cincinnati. 100% of our students will participate in experience-based learning at UC. Um, so whether that is a co-op, an internship, a clinical rotation, um, you know, musical performance, if you're in the college conservatory of music, um, study abroad, whatever it might be, there is 100% of our students will be getting involved in some sort of experiential learning um, to make sure that what it, it is that they're studying is what they want to do with their career when they graduate. Uh, we have something called the Bearcat Promise at Cincinnati. The Bearcat's our mascot, if you're not, not aware. Um, so the Bearcat Promise is basically the university's commitment to you as a student saying that when you come to UC, you will not only graduate with a degree, but you will also graduate with a plan for what's next. Um, and the reason that we're so successful in that is because of this 100% student participation in experiential learning. We actually invented cooperative education or co-op back in 1906. So we have a really robust co-op program and it just keeps evolving. Um, you can see on the slide that there's some required co-op programs. Um, so for engineering, our College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning and our information technology programs, there will be a required element to the, um, the co-op where students, it might take an additional year to graduate, but you are working full time and students earn on average over $10,000 per semester that they co-op. Um, and then we have some optional co-op programs like our College of Business, Nursing and Medicine. But because we keep evolving this, the co-op program since inventing it, um, we are also expanding co-op to be available to students of any and all majors. So regardless of what you know, academic college that you're a part of or what your major is, you will have a chance to participate in co-op um, if you want to. Um, it's just more kind of structured and set up in the, the programs that um, require it because it's part of your curriculum. But we do have staff that will work with you to make sure that they can set you up with internships and co-op. Really important skills to have, especially in STEM majors, making sure that you are applying what you're learning in the classroom to the real world and also just making sure that that's actually what you want to do with your life. Um, so we've been ranked in top five co-op programs by U.S. News and World Report. Um, we have that Carnegie One classification for research. So if your STEM interest is in research, we have a lot of we have hundreds of millions of dollars each year in um, in research funding available to students, not just graduate level students or faculty, but undergraduate students as well. Staff that will work with you to help sum submit um, you know different grant report reports and funding and things like that to get the the funding you need to do your research. Um, we also, not, not too long ago, probably about like three, four years ago, um, started a, an innovation hub. So the 1819 Innovation Hub, um, which houses a venture lab. We actually bring in venture capitalists to hear student pitches and see their products and prototypes to help connect those two. Um, we also have corporate um, or corporations that will come and do into our innovation spaces in, in the innovation hub. And um, they'll, they'll, they'll work with our students on developing products or developing ideas and different things. Um, and the, the students really get that hands-on experience um, with companies that are based in the Cincinnati area, like Kroger, Procter & Gamble, just to name a couple. Um, so really kind of 
state-of-the-art technology available, um, everything that you could think of at a large public institution, research, you know, one institution would have, we have at Cincinnati um, that we're really proud of. So getting into the admissions uh, part of it, we have a December 1st early action deadline. Uh, we highly recommend that you apply by December 1st because it is um, not only the admission deadline for early action, but it's also the scholarship consideration deadline. We will be test optional for fall 23 and 24, um, and then we'll reevaluate at that point. Um, the only exception to that right now would be nursing and early childhood education, although early childhood education may change, but nursing definitely won't change for the next year. Um, scholarships are available as well, uh, but again, the big thing is to apply by December 1st. And here's my contact information if you have any questions. Um, obviously, this is not enough time to cover <laughs> everything that we could possibly cover. So if you have questions about a specific program, I'm more than happy to help. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much to the University of Cincinnati. And that was actually our final presenter for today. Uh, we still have a little bit of time left, so I would like to invite all of our presenters to uh, go ahead and turn their cameras back on so we can do a little Q&A session here. Uh, so what I'd first like to ask all of you is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, University of Oregon again. Awesome. Thank you. So I always just like to start by saying I know this can be a stressful process, but also keep in mind this is one of the most exciting times in your life where you're deciding on where to call home for the next four years. So make sure to have some fun with it and enjoy this process and let us know how we can help because we're here as your resources. And how about Utica University? To piggyback a little bit off Emily, definitely utilize us as admissions counselors, definitely reach out to us uh, for any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, but my number one piece of advice is if you are interested in a school, you can do all the research online that you want, uh, but visiting a campus in person, I think, is the best experience that you can get during the college search process. So that would be my number one piece of advice. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback on Brandon and Emily, um, if you have that chance to visit, I think that that is uh, a really great piece of advice. Uh, it will allow you to know the minute you step foot on campus if this is the, the right fit for you. And remember, it's all about fit. It's about the fit for you as a student. Are you going to be happy there? You see yourself uh, kind of fitting in and being able to thrive academically. Not necessarily a fit for your parents, but it is a fit for you. Uh, even if you don't have that opportunity to visit, Take advantage of the virtual events that the college uh, colleges will offer on their websites. Uh, you'll be able to go into dorms and see what their dorms are like and uh, see what the dining hall is like and uh, how the academics are. Uh, and reach out to the representative for your area uh, to chat with them so that you have that connection. And if you have any questions that kind of come up during your uh, research, then you are able to just contact them. And how about PIA? I think I'll, I'll give you a theoretical and a tangible. My theoretical is empower yourself through exploration. There's no set correct educational or career course. It's really what's best for you, your personality, your passions, and your future hopes and goals. And I think the only way you find the ultimate fit for you is to explore those options through events like today, or like my colleague said, by visiting the campus. My tangible that I think helps students tremendously is create a separate email, whether in the exploration or going through the admissions process. Our personal email signs get so cluttered with so many things. This way you can really have that one-stop shop where you go in and whether getting the exploration stuff or especially during the admissions process, really have everything right there for you to keep in contact, to keep everything going. And I gotta share it like Emily and Erin, New Jersey boy right here as well, Somerset County. So I literally could relate to you all being in New Jersey, exploring that next step and just wish you good luck. 
my piece of advice would be to follow deadlines. Um, <laughs> it's my not as fun, it's a very serious piece of advice, but the reason I say it and I harp on it so much to students is because it's so important. Um, figuring out your list and then once you have your list, actually sitting down and writing down the deadlines for each college that you're applying to is going to be so critical to making sure that you not only get your application and your materials in on time, but any scholarship applications or deadlines that you need to meet, um, any of that stuff. A lot of some some colleges can be forgiving, but many are not. And if you miss a deadline, even by a minute or an hour or a day, um, it's just that's you missed it. You just missed it. And that stinks. <laughs> um, so I always hate when I talk to students uh, at Cincinnati who are who are reaching out to me asking if they got any merit scholarship money, but because they completed their application on December 2nd, I have to say that we never considered them for scholarship money because they missed a deadline and it was literally by a day. Um, so my big thing is to just figure out the deadlines and follow the deadlines. Um, and when I say that, I also mean like don't apply at the deadline, but try to apply like a week before the deadline to give yourself some time. So that's my big one. And, and you know what, I kind of have to just say one thing uh, in regard to Aaron's comment, and it is so true. I was actually at a college fair, and it was around this time of year, and a student, a student came in, goes up to the college next to me, is so excited, they've made their decision to go there, and then he asked about scholarship, and the counselor stage just went at them, because he obviously didn't read uh, or do the research knowing that there was a separate application to apply for the scholarship. So he kind of missed out on that. And a lot of the colleges and universities do have deadlines. So that's really important. And in regards to that, um, check the school. I know at Marist, we do not require a separate application, but other schools do. Awesome. Lots of really, really good advice there. Uh, we probably have time for one last question. So uh, I think the big one is, what is one thing that you want students to remember about your school? And uh, again, we'll go ahead and start with Oregon. I'll share my favorite thing. Uh, I love the sustainability initiatives that are going on and off campus where we're located. And it's a part of every way of life in Eugene. So everything is done with the environment in mind. So I will just leave that with everyone's last thoughts. And then I guess we'll go in order again here. <laughs> um, there's one thing I would say that I uh, definitely want you guys to remember about Utica. Uh, it's it's our campus feel, feel, our culture, our sense of community that you get. Uh, we we like to consider ourselves uh, the pioneer family uh, when it comes to our students, faculty, and staff. Uh, we're a very cohesive group. Uh, we have a great relationship with the city of Utica as well. And uh, we work really well together in terms of internships and job placement. Uh, so that is probably, I think, what highlight about Utica and what makes us a little bit different. Yeah, and I have to follow up the same with Marist. Uh, it's all about the Marist family, the, the Red Fox Nation. Uh, and students feel it and have that sense when they step foot on campus that they want to be a part of it. Uh, very welcoming, very accommodating, very sustainable in regards to uh, so many things on campus. Uh, but it's definitely the, 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 the Marist community. I would say for us, it's small class sizes meets hands-on education, getting to work on actual aircraft while in our program where passionate people and technology come together because as exciting and wonderful as technology is, it really is only possible because of the amazing people behind it, whether creating it, working on it or maintaining it. And that's really kind of the foundation that we lay with our students at PIA. And for Cincinnati, um, I always like to just reiterate that that Bearcat promise, the experience-based learning and graduating with a degree and that that plan is actually, it's not just a marketing term, it's not just a marketing ploy or something we put in our brochures, it truly is um, a very huge initiative and uh, passion for everyone at the university. So um, I always like to make sure that students and parents know that that's not just words that I'm saying, but it's actually something that we are every day doing um, at the University of Cincinnati is making sure that students don't just graduate and with a bunch of loans, but they graduate with like a job lined up or a graduate program lined up, whatever it might be. And hopefully no loans. <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing that information. Also, thanks to all of our presenters for, for um, all of their presentations and, and sharing more about their institutions. Really appreciate that. Uh, but like I say, we are kind of running out of time here. So I also want to say thanks to all of you for joining us today.
uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback that you could provide. Uh, we also encourage you to check back at the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There's a couple more tonight. And lastly, again, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. Uh, thanks again and have a good rest of the fair.